everybody for coming along. Um, so yeah, we, we, we've got Prue Healy here, uh, to, who's been working in PR for the last six years. Um, she's worked uh, big events PR and fashion PR in particular. Um, so we've asked her to come along and talk to us about uh, doing PR for your startup um, and with a particularly with a fashion focus, um, obviously with Shoes of Prey and Sneaking Duck, we're in the fashion space and I know there's quite a few other um, online retail fashion startups here today, so um, without further ado, Prue. Don't clap yet, it might be crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess what I've done tonight is done a little bit of a PR, sort of 101, because I guess, you know, I tend to find that some people know everything about PR or sort of they've got been told different things and other people know nothing. Um, so I've sort of gone from a little bit of a 101 perspective. And I guess while I've done quite a lot of fashion and big events and different things like that, I just sort of thought I'd keep it quite general. So whatever your brand, your business, your whatever is, it can sort of be applicable. So, so we're doing PR, PR 101 in a nutshell. So. This is just a bit of my background. Um, I basically started out doing Sadie's Benz Fashion Festival in Brisbane when it was in its sort of foundation years, um, and then worked with a luxury retail and then went into agency, which is sort of, you know, as most of you would know, the best way to get a full 360 completely tortured and overworked perspective on PR <laughs> or anything. So um, I've worked on quite a lot of startup brands like South Bank Young Designers Market in Brisbane, which was like huge news, um, and I'm allowed to say that being a Brisbane girl, it was quite exciting to have something that was a bit funky, um, and the big sort of the big boy Westfield, right through to sort of startup brands like Lisa Blue, which is a little swimwear label, which actually caused me the most horrific cri media crisis of my career about four months ago, and I'm still recovering from that. Um, so that goes to show that no matter how big or how little you are, it doesn't sort of, you know, when you're doing things, they can actually go much larger than you ever expected. And that went global. Um, so then I've done things like Chanel, and then in particular, Rosemount Sydney Fashion Festival and Rosemount Australian Fashion Week. So that was all the online and broadcast publicity for the last three years. So that's quite a big baby. So, um, you know, what PR is, is basically it's, you know, the public relations of your brand. So it's, you know, how do people see your brand? And it's generally to do with your external sort of, your external perception outside of your key sort of suppliers and stakeholders and things. Um, and it's all about doing things that share what your brand <coughs> is with you know, a broader public and generally through the media, although that's sort of all starting to get a bit blurry with social media and how everything's working. Um, so, you know, traditionally it was about having an editorial story, which means it's not an ad or something that you've paid for, um, and having that story appear in a magazine or a newspaper or whatever about your brand or something that you've done. Whereas now with, um, with Facebook and Twitter and blogs and, and all that stuff, it's really sort of changing, I guess, how everything works. So, um, so it's all, I guess, about the mix in PR. So it's not just about, you know, sending out a press release to 600 people and, and hoping that it works because you'd really be up the creek with no paddle. And I guess, you know, everyone's business works differently and you each have sort of different markets and by sending something out to you know everyone you know in the world it's not going to give you the results that you want necessarily. So the other things that are in the mix these days is very much sort of one-on-one -on -one media catch-ups which I'm a huge advocate for like it does take a lot of time to do those but I think it's really really worth it sort of having that time to sit down with someone and go right what's your magazine about what are you about at the moment and this is what this is my story and this is what I've got going on. Um, launch events, so I mean they're the bane of everyone's existence but they do, do some really great things if it's at the right time for your business. Um, media gifting, there's nothing media love more than a free something. If it's French champagne that's great, if it's a pair of earrings or shoes or glasses or whatever. Um, while it sometimes feels a bit awkward sending them something that's free, um, it actually gives them a chance to touch and feel your product which they can't do through the screen. Um, it's also, I guess, about social media and Facebook and Twitter and blogs, which I'm sure you all know a lot about and probably way more than me because we're all sort of just sort of learning as we go through. Um, and then doing lots of cross promotion and content. So if you're doing one thing in advertising or you're doing a campaign or whatever, it really needs to sort of roll out across 
all the different sort of areas in your business. And I guess the ability to sort of amplify things, not just through traditional media, is where you really see a lot of great results. So, you know, basically what I'm saying is that when you're doing PR, it's really about picking up things that are already going on in your business and just seeing which ways you can get them out there into the world. So, so I just thought we'd look very, very quickly at two businesses that are one that's doing it really well and one that's um, got itself into a bit of trouble in the last few days, which is why I did this presentation today. Because I thought it would be more newsworthy and if you've seen TV in the last few days, hopefully you've seen some of this stuff. So, um, Sports Girl is someone that I think is doing things really well in terms of their PR. And the reason that they're doing this well is that they are amplifying their brand through a variety of channels. So they've got a blog, so it's connecting customers with information about what's going on globally. At the moment, they're doing Paris Fashion Week. They've got someone sitting in Paris going to the shows and streaming it back to their sports girl customers because at the end of the day, the sports girl, what they're seeing in Paris will, you know, distill down the line and, you know, in six, nine months or maybe six weeks, Customers will be able to see those trends pushed through to their stores. Um, they're doing lots of designer collaborations, which is really great for Sports Girl to keep their brand relevant. So there's people, there's brands that I'm, you know, have been seeing in recent years that are in emerging shows at Fashion Week, like Dini, or there's big sort of sorry boys, <laughs> but like a brand like Anna and Boy, which is swimwear. So I'm sure you've been to that. But um, you know, so I guess it's about finding different things to keep them fresh and relevant. Um, Sports Girl did a big find the stylist competition. Now this is something they basically, because I mean, I guess when you're going into a retail store, what you want is you want an opinion, you want to find a trend, you want to find something that works for you. So what they did is they got their customers to put together looks and do all sorts of, generate their own content and enter into a competition where they could be the Sports Girl stylist. And they got all sorts of prizes from that. So really it was, I guess their efforts to activate what is a really excited consumer market that's shopping at Sports Girl with the ultimate girls fantasy which is to be a stylist. Um, they've got an amazing website is another thing is you know really I guess it flows through all of their elements. They've got forums you can ask questions, they've got offers you can sign up for so it's completely integrated. Um, and they've got really well executed media events. So they've done, they do things when it's timely. They're not just doing things for the sake of doing things. There's a few brands that, you know, they'll um, have an event if they're, you know, uh, you know, turning a like a new page in their business, which is, you know, not not that relevant as opposed to, you know, launching a campaign or announcing a spokesperson and really creating a big deal. So I guess that's how Sports Girls doing it very well. Um, and you can sort of go onto their website and disagree or agree with me. Um, PR gone wrong. So has everyone heard about the GASP retail thing? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Um, so this is really PR gone wrong. And I'm not sure whether these guys have got a publicist. I would say not. <laughs> but it's all sort of unraveled. And now that um, when you're not in the crisis as a PR consultant, it's actually not enjoyable, but it's kind of nice to sort of see how things roll and you can sort of, you know, play the game to yourself as to how you would, so what you would do. So what happened? So basically, Gasp, <laughs> Gasp is a retail store in Melbourne. They basically sell um, trashy sort of sheep dresses. Like, you know, like you've seen them in the cross on a Friday night, like right up, you know, they sort of finish at the bottom and, you know, boobs out and lots of glitter and sequins and things everywhere. So they've got a retail store in, in Melbourne and they're also based in the US and basically what they did is um, they had a customer come in and she basically in a nutshell got really poor customer service. She was harassed by the sales assistant and all sorts of things and chased out of the store and made her feel really uncomfortable. So what she did, which is a really nice thing to do and I think we've all done it, is she sent an email to the head office going, you know, just went into your store on the weekend, this is what happened, I spoke to this attendant, they, you know, and this is the situation that happened. And basically the, <laughs> the retail assistant um, and the retail, the regional manager who got the emails must have spoken to the assistant that was in question and then came back to the, the customer saying basically, well, I don't know what's your problem, you know, this stylist has a sixth sense in fashion, you know where this is going, like it just, 
Anyway, just got worse. So, you know, that email went back and then another email went back. And next thing you know, it's global. So I think I was sitting at my desk, really busy. Um, and then I started watching it trend on Twitter. And by the end of the day, I think this was, you know, maybe lunchtime. By the end of the day, it was on UK websites. It had gone over to the US. It was just everywhere because this guy was scathing. Um, and then, as a result, all the media's coverage started to appear. <laughs> and the very clever style assistant who was at the centre of this whole, you know, the gasp, gasp gate or whatever you want to call it, then went on to Twitter and put up, um, oh, that girl was really fat or something anyway. So it was just like, you know, instead of something finishing at a certain point, it just kept escalating. So. It was kind of funny, but um, so I thought it'd be great to sort of just look at this in a what can be learned from this mess um, and, you know, just I guess from anyone's business perspective, the things that you do and the things that you don't do. Um, so basically this, you know, never put something, if a complaint, and I guess this could be as little as, and this started from a just feedback on a customer, like a complaint saying, wasn't happy with the way I was treated, whatever, which is, you know, standard. Every business gets them, you kind of expect to get them, um, is that you never put anything in an email that you wouldn't want forwarded to 600 people. Um, because the things that I've seen in recent years that have caused the biggest sort of spikes in, for, and crises for business have started with something as little as a customer complaint. Like another one that happened a little while ago in Brisbane, someone sent a restaurant a feedback saying wasn't happy, you know, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the same sort of situation happened, the restaurant's gone. So it's sort of, you just don't put things in an email that you don't want to be seen by the world. Um, so don't fight with fire, you will get burned. That's the most, like... <laughs> philosophical thing I could think of this morning um, and this is coming off of something that I've you know I've just actually had to deal with recently which um, a crisis with a client which actually started with a piece of fashion a fashion item and ended up as a political <laughs> hot potato so um, you know it's just one of those things you've got to recognize what it is